Hey guys, this is Mark Osagata from Death Angel. This is what's in my bag. My bag. <laughs> What's my first selection? We're going random. I have vinyl and I have CDs. I don't want to offend any vinyl collectors. First one, David Bowie, Hunky Dory. She's so squishy in a sad and a In a rock A masterful record. David Bowie was such an inspiration for me. The album that just grabbed me, grabbed me as a little kid was Hunky Dory and I think it's just phenomenal. His band, spectacular. Let's get a CD now. PJ Harvey, Dry. Her debut record, this, I had just moved back from New York. I moved to New York in 91, got back in 93, and picked this record up, because I read about it, and when I put it on, the production just blew me away. The songwriting, the, 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 the drums and the bass, everything was just, to me, just stellar. Janice was always my girl, Janice Joplin. I'm a fan of women in music, I have been for years, but she was the one that I became mega fan with. Phenomenal record. Go back to vinyl. Kiss, Love Gun. I really love you, baby. I love what you've got. This was my first Kiss record that my parents bought me, and it came with the, the little paper gun that popped out. You know, they've gotten slack from a lot of people over the years, but you, you can't deny their influence on most rock bands younger than them. And they, they're definitely a main influence on me. I think Paul Stanley is one of the greatest frontmen ever. My very first concert was Kiss 1979 at the Cow Palace on the Dynasty Tour. I was 10, um, four-fifths of the original Death Angel, we all went together. And our drummer was seven at the time. It was our first concert because we, on the way there, we went in full Kiss makeup. I'm an ace guy, you know. I, I, Paul Stanley's my guy, front man, but uh, you know, I went dressed as ace. And as soon as the lights went down, when we wanted to yell our thing, we realized, oh, I guess it's never going to be quiet for Kiss to hear us. And that's how you could tell it was our first concert, you know. And it blew my mind. And I knew ten minutes into the show, that's what I want to be when I grow up. That's been my goal, and I'm still, you know, working on it. Thanks to Kiss. <laughs> we'll go back to a CD. Ah. ACDC, Let There Be Rock. Let there be guitar. There was guitar. Oh, let there be rock. I'm a Bon Scott guy, through and through, and all my friends know that. The whole Bon Scott era I love. Power Ridge is actually my favorite one. It's my favorite ACDC record. Very underrated. Um, What's Next to the Moon is my favorite ACDC song, very underrated song and obscure, but this was my first record by ACDC. And when I heard Let There Be Rock, it just blew my mind. It blew my mind. It's like they were speaking to me, and I was like, yep. All right, back to vinyl. Black Sabbath, Sabotage. The way I feel is the way I am. Obviously love Black Sabbath, Mach 1 and 2, but um, I'll always be an original Sabbath guy. People love the early stuff. I love all the early stuff. I love, you know, that catalog. You have your people. Everyone, there's mass reality people, and there's definitely the majority are Sabbath bloody Sabbath people. I myself, a Sabotage guy to the core. This record blew my mind, and I was already way into Sabbath. And when I heard this in my friend's car, first time I heard, Da -na 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 -na. Yeah. First time I heard Ozzy do that, I was like, whoa, I've never heard him do anything like that in my mind. I was just, this album was it. And also the song, The Writ. The last song is my favorite Black Sabbath song there is. And I think this is Ozzy's peak vocal performance, this record, and that song particularly, The Writ. The way I feel is the way I am. When I heard that, ah. Oh. And then soon as I heard the line, a poisoned father who's just poisoned his son, that's you, and I was it's like, Perfect, you know, perfect for a teenage rebellious kid to cling on to that line. You know, you're against your family, you're against your parents. Of course, I love my parents now, but it's just, <laughs> <laughs> this is my, this is my Sabbath record. Star on top of the Christmas tree. All right, 
Back to CDs. Judas Priest, Unleashed in the East. Absolutely love Judas Priest. It's to this day, I, I can't just listen to a song. I need to listen to the whole CD thing. It's spectacular. They're just peaking. Peaking. Oh yeah, we played with Priest. Quite a few festivals. It was two summers ago, we played with them in Mexico City. We got to hang out with Rob after and get some photos with him. And it was funny because, you know, I got photos next to him doing the metal thing and I also got a photo of me kissing Rob Halford on the cheek. And to me, it's like, yes, I kissed Halford on the cheek, you know? <laughs> He's, I mean, undeniably one of my favorite vocalists of all time. And if uh, you don't, I don't think you have to be, you know, into metal to realize that he's spectacular. And he still can belt it to this day, which is very rare for, you know, a metal singer. And he's defied the odds. Amazing. Back to vinyl. Whoa, hey. I was talking about this earlier. Led Zeppelin II. This is always my go-to record. Um, I, of course, I love the whole catalog, but this takes me to a special place. My experimental years when I was a teenager, I mean, I used to experience, like a teenager, also early 20s, experiment with psychedelics. Uh, <laughs> often, uh, it, with, without fail, actually, whenever we'd be at the house that we were tripping at, um, I would always leave at one point and leave the room and go into a room by myself, sit by a speaker and put on Led Zeppelin II and just be in heaven and I'd just sit there in my own head, and, and you know, inevitably, friends of mine would come in, hey man, are you okay? Are you having a bad trip? And I'd just say, like, no, no, actually, this is actually the best part of my trip, and you're ruining it, you know? Just, just leave me alone with Led Zeppelin two, right, right between the two speakers, and it's, to this day, whenever I hear it, it just takes me, you know, makes me feel something special. <laughs> uh, I have two tattoos of bands on my body, and that would be Led Zeppelin and Black Sabbath, the two bands, <laughs> right there. I have the Sabbath Devil on one shoulder and the Swan Song guy on the other shoulder. Bam Bam, those are my bands. CD, Elton John, Madman Across the Water. Oh, I am a mirror, I can reflect the moon. I love Elton John, 70s Elton John, some of the greatest things ever, 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 produced by Gus Dudgeon. This record, of course, gets a lot of attention because of Tiny Dancer. Sure, it is a great song, it's popular. That's not my reason for, for the record. I do love it. But uh, the final song on it, the last song is called Goodbye, and that's my favorite Elton John song. And since our debut album, The Ultraviolence, came out in 87, part of my warm up and ritual before I go on stage every time is to sing the song Goodbye. It's been a ritual since 87, I, you know? I love that song, I love this man, and uh, I have a Captain Fantastic and the Brown Dirt Cowboy and ammo belt buckle still, so. <laughs> Nick Cave and the Bad Seeds, Murder Ballads. Just then in came a broad called Nellie Brown known to make more money than an bitch in town. I love Nick Cave, he's, uh, some of it came along, again, when I moved back from New York, and I, I kind of slowed down at that point listening to metal for a bit just because I needed to just cleanse my head for a moment of just chaos. And when I discovered Nick Cave, it was just like nothing I'd ever heard. It's hard for me to pick a favorite record of his because they're just spectacular, but Murder Ballads, it, there's the beauty and the darkness behind it is just, and the irony is, is, is wonderful. It's produced amazingly well. To me, um, one of the greatest living lyricists that we have at this point. He'll, he'll remain one of the greatest lyricists ever, but one of the greatest living ones we have right now. Down to CDs. Queen, Sheer Heart Attack. Messenger from seven seas has flown. Queen, my favorite bands of all time. Freddie Mercury, one of my favorite vocalists of all time. Again, I was lucky enough, my father had this record. And the cover just blew me away. And when I put it on, I, I mean, vocals spectacular by all of them. Roger Taylor's phenomenal voice. Brian May has phenomenal voice. Freddie Mercury is the voice. I love it. Again, this is one of those ones that I have to listen to all the way through. Because it just, how the, all the songs flow together is just 
the dubbing they were doing back then, just that's, that was unheard of. You know, Brian May was just doing this metal dubbing, you know, so to speak, on, on the guitar. But ironically, my favorite song on it is uh, just Freddie and Piano, a song called Lily of the Valley. And uh, I am forever searching high. <laughs> yeah, my voice is thrashed because I just screamed metal, but <laughs> I can usually sing that song. I couldn't play it on piano though, but I love Freddie Mercury, I love Queen. All right, and last but not least, Rainbow, Long Live Rock and Roll. Love should be a simple plan. This is the first one I had. Marty James Dio, vocally, stage persona, everything. I love all the stuff he did with Sabbath. I love all the stuff he did with Rainbow. I love his, you know, his solo years. Just powerful, dark, beautiful, beautiful. I know I've read about, you know, they weren't tight as a unit, apparently, we're, we're recording this, but the song has changed my life. Just spectacular, spectacular. Rainbow eyes. This was my first introduction. And you never forget your first introduction. I love Ronnie James Dio. And I miss him, and I met him, and he was a sweetheart of a man. I carry a spirit with me kind of every time I walk on stage, absolutely. And people say, like, like yeah, I'm flagrant about how I want to rip off Dio. If you don't, you're doing it wrong. <laughs> and that's, uh, I believe, everything that's in my, in my bag. Thank you for your time. I love all music again. It's hard, you know, to shop in such a small amount of time and not leave with everything. But awesome. It was beautiful. Thank we, you so much, Mark. Absolutely. Thank you, guys. Got it.